Hello dear students, welcome to my class. I am Neha Sharma from Physics Department and today we will learn about the Bose-Einstein distribution law. The statistics is of two kinds where the first category is the classical statistics which is also called Maxwell-Boltzmann statistics and the second category of the statistics is called quantum statistics. So what is the basic difference between these statistics? So the basic difference between these statistics is that in case of classical statistics, the particles are considered as distinguishable, whereas in case of second kind, that is the quantum statistics, the particles are considered as indistinguishable in nature. Further, the quantum statistics has two types that is Bose-Einstein statistics and Fermi-Dirac statistics. So obviously, because both of these Bose-Einstein and Fermi-Dirac, they are the categories of quantum statistics, then obviously the particles considered under these statistics are indistinguishable in nature. Then where is the difference lying? So the difference is lying in the fact that the Fermi-Dirac statistics, which is the second category of the quantum statistics, that obeys Pauli exclusion principle. So as you all know that according to the Pauli exclusion principles, no two particles can be there in a single level with all the four quantum numbers as same. Whereas in case of Bose-Einstein statistics, the particles which are indistinguishable in nature, they don't obey Pauli exclusion principle. Let's consider a diagram. So as you can see, there are two type of systems represented here, where you can see the number of energy levels and the particles are there. So carefully observe the situation that how these particles are getting arranged among these levels. So let's see. So, as you saw here, that in the very first case, both the particles occupied the same energy level. Whereas, in the second case, the particles, they preferred to occupy different energy levels. So, this behavior basically differentiates both the categories of the particles, where the first category of the particle, in which they are trying to occupy the same level, are called bosons whereas the second category in which the particles are trying to occupy different energy levels are called fermions so they will obey fermi dirac statistics so let's now start the derivation part of bose einstein distribution law we are going to consider that let our system is having n bosons means and such particles which obey Bose-Einstein statistics. And let our system is divided into k compartments, where each compartment is having particular number of cells. So let's suppose G1 represents number of cells in the first compartment. So Overall, we have considered k compartment and for the kth compartment, we have gk number of cells. But for our derivation purpose, we will consider any general compartment that is ith compartment, which is having gi cells and ni number of indistinguishable particles. As you know, bosons are indistinguishable in nature. Now, in order to understand the terms like compartments, cells, you will have to consider one example. Example is of your college. These are basically representing the rooms in the college. And according to our derivation, these small squares are representing compartments. And so on. Up to kth compartment. And second thing is that, our compartments are also divided into cells. So, for that, you will have to consider one compartment at a time. Let's suppose we are considering the first compartment. 
in the first compartment if i have to draw the cells then they will be like this so these cells are example of desk present in the classroom now how the particles can be arranged in the compartment that will be simply understood from the fact that how students can sit on the desk if the arrangement is such that on any one desk more than one student is allowed then that is the example of bosons representation or arrangement of bosons in the system now let's move back to our derivation as we have considered the ith compartment for our observation so obviously we would like to see that how these particles are arranged in the ith compartment so for that obviously we have two type of arrangements one is meaningless arrangement and the others are meaningful arrangements so total number of arrangements can be obtained by just multiplying these two we need only meaningful arrangements and now we are going to write down the expression for that how we can write down the total number of ways of distribution of ni particles in gi cells for a particular compartment that is ith compartment so total number of ways can be written as w and that will be simply multiplication of all the ways of arranging all the particles in different different compartments here w1 is basically representing the number of ways of arranging n1 particles in first compartment which is having g1 cells similarly w2 is representing the total number of meaningful ways of arranging n2 particles in the second compartment which is having g2 cells so when multiplication is present and you have expression for any ith compartment then this expression can be written in this form and finally we will get pi i varies from 1 to k and the expression of w i that is written just now so we can put it here now after doing it now we will take the natural log on both sides because natural log of m by n can be written as natural log of m minus natural log of so just apply this formula here and you will get now one more formula can be applied here that is natural log of m into n now natural log m into n will be applied here and you will get so now because you know that number of particles are very very large applying the stirling's formula we will get this expression then we will see that which terms are getting cancelled here so finally we are left with this expression now we need to differentiate both the sides so we can see that this factor is getting cancelled here so you can cancel this factor ni plus gi minus 1 moreover this ni and denominator ni that will also get cancelled so what you are left with you are left with this expression look this is plus dni and this is minus dni so again cancellation will be there and finally you have only two terms and dni is taken outside because that can be taken as common from both the terms because you know that number of particles because we have already discussed that number of particles are very very large and similarly cells would also be very large so this one can be neglected in comparison to the ni plus gi now you know that if we will consider the most probable state most probable state is that state which has maximum probability of occurrence so equilibrium state is the most probable state and one more thing for the most probable state you know that thermodynamic probability is maximum that is maximum number of microstates are present in this state and you know that whenever anything is maximum or minimum what you do you just simply differentiate that and after differentiating you just put that equal to zero so similar we will do here 
we will put this derivative of natural log w as equal to 0. Here the system we are considering is the isolated system. And isolated system simply has two properties. Obviously n will be equal to. Second thing is that if you are taking that total energy of the system is constant. Then obviously for the particular system. So, this expression can also be written in terms of summation. So, if you differentiate the first point, you will get equation number A. Then, if you want to differentiate the second point for the total energy, then what you will get? So, you can give it equation number B. We will subtract both these equations from derivative of natural log W. So, this is the Lagrangian method of undetermined multipliers. Now, you can see that D and I is common in all. Now, because the whole thing is equal to 0, then obviously the inside bracket that can be equated to 0 also. So, when you will apply this formula, your expression will become we will have to take exponential on both the sides. Now, because you know that e raised to the power log of x is simply equal to x, so it can be written as we will get ni by ni that is 1 plus gi upon ni is equal to e raised to the power alpha into e raised to the power beta into ui. So, this expression is basically representing the number of particles in the ith compartment. So, if you want to write down the number of particles per unit energy level or per unit energy interval corresponding to the mean energy magnitude u, then this expression can be written as and with the help of this, you can easily calculate the number of particles in particular interval u to u plus du and that can be written as so after replacing it you will get simply Bose Einstein distribution law. So I think it would be clear to all of you. Thank you so much for listening me.